Hi everyone, my name's Dave Norris, and in my Salesforce career, I've been in a few crisis meetings about slow running processes, strange Apex errors in production, and even a few related to users having access to data without permission. In my opinion, the key to a successful Salesforce implementation is not having zero of these issues, that's gonna be impossible. It's about being able to triage those issues quickly with data to back up decisions. And that's why in this video, I'll be covering event monitoring. Event monitoring provides some transparency into user behavior and system performance. It collects user activity, also referred to as events, into event log files and objects that you can use for analysis. Now, event monitoring is a core component of something called Salesforce Shield. And Salesforce Shield has many components to help build an extra layer of security compliance, and control. In addition to event monitoring, Salesforce Shield includes platform encryption, data detect, and field audit trail, forming that comprehensive solution for protecting sensitive data and meeting regulatory requirements. To access the full range of event monitoring capabilities we're gonna cover in this video, an organization must have either a Salesforce Shield or event monitoring add-on subscription. Whilst event monitoring is just one product, it has many capabilities that in my opinion are misunderstood. So I'm gonna walk through those key capabilities with a really easy to understand diagram. So our journey starts on the left-hand side of this diagram with your users and they're creating activity, whether that's in the desktop, mobile, or via an API. Activity like logging in, viewing records, and running reports. And Salesforce captures a vast amount of application events from every type of interaction within your org. But due to the multi-tenant environment, the raw logs aren't directly accessible. Instead, Salesforce processes these into more consumable formats. Salesforce takes 74 event types listed on the right-hand side here and makes them available in an object called event log file where the event files can be downloaded. Now these events cover everything from authentication and access events, App Exchange package and metadata API events, page access events, Apex and API events, and many more as you can see as they scroll down on the right hand side. Now this process is asynchronous and operates in batch mode, copying events hourly and daily, and Salesforce stores these logs for up to one year. To get access to the event log files, you can use APIs, or the handy event log file browser from your setup menu. Just filter based on the date range and event types and then download the corresponding CSV file. Downloading CSV files is certainly one method event monitoring provides, but you can also access some of those events using standard objects. The event log object framework surfaces event data in a series of standard objects referred to as event log objects making it easier to query the event data. Now event log objects contain many, but not all events currently represented in the event log file framework, currently supporting 43 events. Event log objects are asynchronous in nature and operate in batch mode, copying events every 25 to 45 minutes, and event records are stored for 30 days. Now, if getting access to your events using event log files and event log objects isn't frequent enough, don't worry because event monitoring provides a real-time event framework. 14 event types are published to an enterprise messaging platform backed by Apache Kafka and managed by Salesforce. The streaming pattern given to us by the real-time event framework enables services like threat detection. Threat detection subscribes to these user-initiated real-time events and analyzes them for anomalies. Things like credential stuffing, which detects unusual login patterns. Session hijacking, which identifies potential malware compromising a session. Login anomalies to detect potential attackers gaining access to a legitimate user's account. Report anomalies, which baselines user behavior to detect suspicious reporting usage. API anomalies flags unusual API activity. And guest user anomalies, that identify suspicious attempts by guest users to access data. When an anomaly is detected, actions like identity challenges, session termination, or multi-factor authentication requirements are triggered, 
and an event is published to the event bus for further action. And that gives us an additional six real-time events. Eight event types from user activity, together with the six threat detection events, are captured synchronously as part of a component called transaction security. And this is where you can proactively address security risks by creating policies that take immediate action. For example, you can use a declarative builder to block a user from exporting too many records from a particular object. And if a user does try to export records from a report that matches your policy, they see an error message that you can specify. Or you can use Apex to create more complex policies with the flexibility to get more creative with the business logic required to fulfill your security needs. We can also store these real-time events in persistent storage, useful for auditing and reporting. An administrator can use Event Manager in Setup to decide which events to store. Of the 20 events available, now that's 14 coming from user activity plus the six threat detection events, 19 are available to store. Standard objects are exclusively used for threat detection events since they are low in volume. The rest are stored in big objects to support the large volume of events for user activity like page views and login events. These real-time events are stored for six months with two identity events stored for 10 years. And finally, we have reporting and analytics. How do you make sense of this enormous amount of event data that you're now capturing? Well, thankfully, there are many tools with pre-built connectors to help, including CRM Analytics. CRM Analytics provides an event monitoring analytics app with pre-built dashboards to start exploring your event data quickly. For larger enterprises, there are tools like Splunk and Datadog that you can use that will also have pre-built connectors to be able to pull the event logs or event storage records into their tools and then aggregate them with data from other systems, providing that holistic security view. You can also subscribe to the events from the event bus directly, just like you can for standard platform events with 18 event types available. To select which events to stream, just head back to Event Manager in Setup and toggle the option for each event you need. And lastly, Data Cloud has just come out with a new connector called Salesforce Platform Events Connector, which is currently in beta to enable you to subscribe to those events and publish them into Data Cloud. Lastly, I think it's worth pausing here to actually look at what detail is in the events we're now capturing. So I thought it would be fun to vibe code a JavaScript application that listens to some events where we can inspect the detail. On the left-hand side is my Salesforce org, and on the right-hand side is the JavaScript application listening for specific real-time events. And you can see it's already captured a login event stream from the login event. So let's navigate around, say going to the Contacts tab, to see which real-time events fire. And you can see it's fired a list view event stream telling me the list view that's currently active. If we change it, let's say selecting all contacts, we'll get another list view event stream telling me I'm now on the all contacts list view. So let's open up a record, in this case a contact record, and you can see it immediately fires a URI event stream telling me the contact record that's open. So let's go run a report now. We'll just pick the new accounts report. And again, after a few seconds on the right hand side, we should see a report event stream fire. Now, each of these event types is capturing different information, but just as an example, let's open the report event stream to have a look at the detail captured. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it captures information relevant to running a report, as well as the system information like when did the event occur? I can see things like the report name. I can see the column headers that were in my report with the object and API name of the field. I can see the total number of records returned and their corresponding record IDs. I can see who ran the report and I can see the report ID. Pretty useful information. And if you're interested in the detail for all of the other event types, check out the documentation. As architects, our reality is not one of bug-free, blazingly fast, impenetrable applications, 
but more one of continuous vigilance and rapid response. And I'm hoping by taking you through event monitoring like this, you now have a newfound appreciation for all of its capabilities and how it might fit into your next project.